it's it's like I say, it's joining these dots up that just seems so very very simple, but that 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 step hasn't been taken. I mean, that that blends neatly into the the next kind of set of data as well. Where we saw how that data was being shared. You know, at that rudimentary level, you know, that we're not expecting anything super. Just just some some fundamental low hanging fruit that should be joined up, and it's not happening. Um, we saw that only a third of the companies in, in the study were sharing data between uh, field service and fleet. Um, another third did have, and this comes back to your point, they were, they were just keeping that data in a central location. Um, you know, um, so uh, theoretically it's accessible to both sides of the business, but um, it's probably not being used unless it's in an exceptional circumstance. It's being used for the exception rather than the norm, and it's not being used to proactively improve efficiency across the, I, I, either side of the business. Um, and a third of organisations, I've, I've kind of broken this down into the kind of the, the, the neat kind of ballparks here, um, but we'll put the full data on the screen again and, and do follow along with the report as well. Um, but there was no data sharing for both third companies. No. We we just touched on some of the obvious benefits in terms of where there there should be some data sharing. You know, for me, it it, it, it this real easy simple win, Steve. Like, if we know from the telematics data how hard that car is that that van has been driven, then we know when it's going to be due for a service. Then we know when it's going to be taken out of fleet, so we can proactively ma manage that. So we're not having any downtime within the, the, the field service uh, scheduling, which, as we alluded to earlier, you know, our customers are getting more and more keen to make sure that the service we deliver is, is on time, it's efficient, first of all the great metrics we know, and we're also really, really struggling with the industry to recruit new field techs as well. So it's huge, huge, huge strain on field service operations. And just those simple little incremental wins that we can get by joining this data would just seem like a complete no-brainer for me. Um, so I, I suppose the big question, because it's not happening, so I suppose the big question is why. Um, obviously in the follow-up part of the study where we've started doing the follow-up interviews as well, um, we'll dig into this a little bit more, but from your, your, your position at the moment, what do you see as being the biggest barrier? Is it process? Is it technology? Is it is it simply that nobody's Nobody's waved this flag and said, guys, you can fix this really easy. What is it? I, I think it's a combination of a lot of those things. And, and there was one, one interesting point as well, is that, you know, that's how the data is being done. And, and, and the survey was about 187 um, professionals. So, so across, uh, you know, across uh, a, a large geographic Europe, Middle East and North America, not one of those companies had actually integrated the applications. So, so in terms of in terms of contextualization, that data is is not being viewed or isn't easy to view in the context of the service that's being delivered. And so, so from that perspective, when you you've got so many things that you're running and so many KPIs that you're trying to achieve, you know, to hit when you're running your field service component, field service business, th this data is not in the context of that. So you can't even have it as a KPI that you can easily manage because it's all historical. It's, it is all rear view mirror activity. Um, you might have access to the data, but you might, and you might be able to say, oh, these, this engineer was, was in a location and doing what, you know, that he shouldn't have been in after the fact. But, but you're not being presented with data, as you said, about how somebody is driving and how they're performing so that you can coach them and give them, give them that data back. So I think it's the fact that that data is out of context um, for field service, which means that it can't be used for regular day-to-day -day KPI use, which means that it's secondary to, to the primary thought. So I think that's one area. Um, I think on a technology front, the fact that it's sitting in completely different areas You've got to draw reports. You've got to do some form of manual analysis of it. Again, that makes it very difficult lift, and so people don't do it because of pressure of work. Um, and and if it's held centrally by IT, and they can do some central reporting for you, again, it's it's rear view. It's not contact, It's not current and and up to date. So so I think it is that combination of things to do it. But but 
all the building blocks are there. The frustrating thing is the building blocks are there and we know it'll have a big, it has a big impact on um, reducing emissions by, by improving the way that people drive, um, by giving you the basis to then go for ongoing improvements, plus equally to, in, to support and coach the technicians so that they are driving more safely and they, are, they understand that it's, it's, you have to get there in a safe way rather than rush to be there. And that exposure of data will influence the way that people schedule. Yeah. Yeah. because then you can schedule taking real, real real data into account so it is a combination of things that there but the, the frustrating thing is that that p is there but people have not joined the dots up yeah